Hello, welcome to the channel. So, in this episode, I'm going to have a go at making a handheld shrinker. I'd recently been working on this job and I needed to shrink an area. Uh, and I couldn't take the panel off, it was all wired within the car. And I basically, I did resolve it, but it was very awkward. And I thought there must be an easier way of basically being able to have a tool that you can use on the car, you know, so it's not fixed on the floor or into a vice like other shrinkers. Uh, and I found this idea, looked it up, and it's around 500, 800, even more for the echo um, equivalent. And yeah, there's no way I can afford anything like that. So I've gone and sourced a set of shrinking dies, really nice ones actually, from Stacey's in the UK. I'll just bring them up to the camera really nice i've been using these for a few weeks now and uh, i use them all the time on on other jobs so i'm going to be using them on this handheld shrinker and the tool i'm going to be modifying is a set of bolt cutters there these are 18 inches long and cost me around 13 pound on ebay so all in all a lot cheaper than if you were to go and buy it It'll be a handy tool if it does work I'm going to modify these, uh, make some brackets so it holds the shrinking drawers in. If it works, fantastic. It's all a bit of a gamble. I don't know the outcome. Uh, in theory, it should work. So I'm looking forward to giving it a go, making some brackets for this. And uh, yeah, uh, stay tuned and see the result at the end. So fingers crossed it works. Okay, so this is my interpretation of basically what is out there on the market. I may have to modify this as I go along, but this is gonna be my starting point and basically theory behind this. Now I've squeezed these together in a vise and taken the overall measurement. So that's when they're fully compressed and that works out at 65 mil. So when I position this eight mil plate here and I'll have another one up here uh, with a tapped hole, um, this has to come to 65 mil it can't be 66 or 67, it has to be 65 mil bang on. Because when these drawers are in the fully closed position, that's when these drawers need to be fully compressed. So this is very crucial. I'm just gonna scallop out around here so it fits nicely on the drawers. I'm gonna weld them onto the drawers there. And then basically this piece here is gonna add uh, as a stiffening plate along the back here and I'll weld it to the arm here. What I also might do is just cut some of the material out of the bolt cutters there. So basically, if you've got to go further into the panel there, you can go further on in and you're not gonna use uh, any of this cutting area here. So I'll just get rid of all of that. So like I said, so you can get further into the panel. That's my idea. Hopefully it works. Uh, so the next thing to do is get these into the 65 mil position. Okay, so I've now cut out the eight mil plates. Um, I completely forgot or overseen the fact that I've got a bit of triangular space here. So I've made a little gusset that's gonna fit in that spot there and will add strength once I've welded it uh, to these two pieces here. I've got uh, this gusset here as well. Um, just gotta trim down and that'll be welded along here, up over the top of the plate to hopefully stop any flex. Um, just gotta trim that down there because I, I need access for my eight mil bolt to go in the center there. Um, I'll shake these up. All this will be fully welded to the actual frame itself. Um, and then I've still gotta cut out this area here to allow a bit of access uh, behind the panel. So that's the plan so far. There's probably a lot neater ways to go about this but just off the top of my head this is how I'm going to go again if it doesn't work I can always modify it um, if the tool gets destroyed at the end of the day it's only 13 pound loss so it's worth a gamble um, like I said there's probably a lot neater ways but this is just what I'm going to do as a mark one Okay, so what I've done here is cut out the cutting drawers and you can just see them there. 
as we don't need them anymore. Um, so what I've opted for is basically cut out of an inch piece of material there and that allows us to get into the panel um, a little bit deeper without leaving any of the cutting marks that the blade may cause. So that's just a bit of access. And what I have done is just leave a bit of material there so it can pivot around that little bar there. Uh, so they still work properly. Um, otherwise, if you chop that out, they're no good. But that's what I've done. Okay, so that's everything uh, roughly shaped up. It's, well, it's pretty much the shape that I'm gonna go for. Um, there'll be a little bit of tidying afterwards once I've uh, weathered it all together, but that is the next stage. So once it's laid out like this, obviously you can see the, the opening there. So that allows me a good reach into a panel. These are my main strength gussets that are gonna run along the external side of the jaws and then some internal gussets there, which are just gonna add an additional bit of strength to, to help it where it needs to, because there's a lot of force going through. It still may flex. Again, this is a complete unknown. Um, I'm just going on a hunch here. Um, fingers crossed it works and that's enough support, but if not, then I'll have to readdress it. But this is what I'm going for uh, to start with. So the next stage is gonna start wilding it up. So uh, I'm gonna get a clamp clamp these in the compressed state, um, offer them up to the jaws, just start getting the tacks on, start offering up the gussets, and uh, I'll go, go from there. Okay, so this is what I mean by clamping it up there to get the jaws fully compressed there. And then what I've done is just put a bar under the bolt cutters there to make that completely level. Then I've just got this um, let me just focus that there. So that's all level there. Again, just tack it up into place first. Don't do anything major. It's touching at that point there. I'm touching at that point there. So we get the tacks in and start building it up. So basically I'm gonna start welding this together. Uh, I'm gonna use a process called TIG welding um, for those of you not familiar with it but it's just a neater, more accurate uh, way of uh, applying the weld. And I think that that's best for this type of material and the job it is. I can really get in there and lay some nice welds down without having to put a huge MIG weld uh, down uh, in some tight areas. So that's why I'm opting for this. So I'm about to start fully welding this into place now. Um, I've got it on a 120 amps. I'm gonna see how that goes. I may need a little bit more, so I may crank it up as I go along. Um, the reason why I put it into the vise like this is because there's so much heat going in into it. Um, I wanna keep it firmly in place. I know the G-clamp would do that, but I think this just gives me a bit more access around the, the tool itself. Um, whilst holding it in place. So I've opted for this. This way I know it will definitely not move. Um, I weld this one side, let it cool down, and then I'll start welding the other side um, just to stop any movement and that in the, in the tool. Um, what I may have to do once it's all cooled down, is just go over a couple of little areas here where it's uh, a bit close to the, the, this linkage here, but nothing too much uh, or too serious. So I'll crack on and start welding it.
Okay, so that's the shrinking jaws all welded up. I've just gone over with a, a row lock tool and just basically taken all the sharp edges off so it's easier to handle. Uh, you're not gonna get any cuts or anything off it. Um, I may paint it at a later date. I'll see if I've got to do any modifications first. Um, but it actually welded okay for cheap metal. Um, I was quite surprised. Uh, it probably took me about 15 minutes to do. Um, the design's changed ever so slightly since I, my initial idea. You know, I've got a bit more of a gap up here. That might come to bite me in the ass. Um, it might flex too much through there. I don't know until I start using it. I'm going to do a test on aluminium. Uh, 1.5 first of all, just a flat piece to see if it uh, puts any shape around the edge and then also going to bend up a 90. I'm just going to do it on aluminium to start with uh, to see well, basically if it works and because that's what I'm going to be using it on. I'm making a body for the Austin 7 project that I'm doing and basically these are coming really handy on that. So um, yeah, aluminium test all goes well if I can find a, a decent little bit of steel. I'll do exactly the same on there. So that's it. Um, hopefully you're as happy with the results uh, as I am. I haven't messed around with the machine, uh, the cutters at all. Um, in my own time, I'm going to tweak them and just see if I can get them a little bit tighter, um, as I would like them to just sort of grip a little bit more. But there's a little adjustment screw on the side, and I might have a, a play around up here. Worst case scenario, I might just have to put a real fine shim in there, just to bring them slightly closer together. Um, but I'm very happy with the results on the alley. Took a few more goes on the steel, but we still got a similar result. So as a first trial, I gotta say I'm very happy with it. So they, they might get a lick of paint yet to look the part. But uh, going back to it, all it's cost me is 13 quid for the bolt curves. If you've got a foot operated uh, shrinker stretcher like this, then you can use the jaws out of here and uh, basically make one yourself. So I'm very happy with the outcome. Uh, hopefully you are too. Uh, thanks for watching. Please support the channel uh, by the PayPal link. Go over to Mel Shaper Tom on Instagram and go see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day, uh, sort of scale with uh, the cars I'm restoring there. And please check out the projects that I've got going on my page. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.